name is Demir Salmanovic. I come from uh, TopTal, and I'm lead technical editor and head of open source at uh, TopTal. So today I'm gonna try to open a few ideas about how to use drones in a, let's say, more civil way than they are usually used. So uh, before I begin, I should have an assistant that uh, works nicely. So I'm gonna actually start with some demos right away. If it all works, yeah. So I'm just gonna tell it to fly in and come to us. So please, take your place. Okay, down, down boy. I said down, don't go to them. Nice. Okay, so you'll see a few more demos uh, about uh, this, but uh, we've been using drones actually for centuries and uh, in a couple of very interesting ways. So uh, this is the uh, first drone used uh, maybe, I don't know, a couple of thousand years ago. And yeah, some might say that this is a rock that David used to uh, hit Goliath in the head. But at that time he was uh, using the cutting ed edge technology of his time to uh, deploy something and defeat his enemy. So fast forward to modern age, uh, we have this. It's pretty much the same thing. We still use drones to throw things at each other. Uh, this time just maybe Goliath learned, so he has actually the rock, so David is not really in a favorite position anymore. Uh, but yeah, I understand, really. Military is uh, the best technology, uh, the, the best place to create new technology and use it because they have the money. And honestly, they, they really don't have to uh, worry about uh, situations where their drone falls and hurts someone because that's pretty much the purpose of drones uh, in that industry. Uh, however, I do really understand that military comes first. But the uh, thing is that uh, even for civil application of drones, uh, we're not really bright. I mean, the, the mostly they're used to take pictures and take selfies. And, and I think that David would be really ashamed of what we're doing with things that uh, he invented. So yeah, military fir first, but uh, if any of you plans to start playing with drones, building your own drones or doing whatever uh, you think it makes sense, just try to come up with a better application for civil purposes because drones can be saved in rescue operations. They, there are experiments when they actually uh, strapped down uh, Microsoft Kinect and uh, made the dro drone uh, aware of uh, its surroundings so it can go through uh, buildings uh, that are uh, not well, suitable for people and so on. So it can be uh, much better. Um, when you are uh, thinking about uh, programming for drones, uh, these are the two main components that uh, you can pay your focus on. It's a either device firmware, where uh, you have to handle math and physics around blade, blade speed and synchronizing things, so learn your math at the faculties if you're not in physics. Uh, handle uh, uh, information from gyroscope and accelerometer uh, to stabilize it. Uh, handle GPS if you're flying outdoor. Uh, process autopilot com commands. Uh, and. Uh, of course, communicate back and forth with your remote. And yeah, as usual, engage the enemy, which means drop the bombs. Uh, remote control software is usually much simpler, actually, uh, because all it has to do is send commands to, uh, to device, to drone, uh, receive status information or a video signal or whatever, process it, do whatever it needs to do. So uh, just by playing, actually, which I will show you uh, today and the fly-in, pattern that uh, you saw is also just automating actually a remote controller. Uh, smart companies uh, use uh, open source in their drones. The, the, the model that I have here is Paris Bebop 2. Uh, it's Android based actually, so you can even hack inside of it. Uh, it has completely open source communication protocol and SDK for Android and iOS that is fully open source and it's available uh, on their GitHub. So it's very easy to pick a drone, uh, understand how it all works, and uh, start playing with it, uh, because you can actually make some amazing things. Uh, 
hopefully the demos will, will work. So first, a little bit of uh, theory uh, about drones. So uh, the examples today and uh, the, the presentation is based on quadcopters, which are uh, mostly commonly, mo most commonly used uh, drones. They have uh, four prop propellers. Each propeller has a, a, speed, a speed controller because uh, you'll need them to be able to tell drone where to go, what to do, etc. Uh, there's a brain inside that, um, of course, uh, does all the calculation, uh, process sensor information from GPS, from gyroscope, uh, handles cameras, and of course, uh, there's a radio transmitter and receiver uh, for for this. Uh, common use drones, it's usually Wi-Fi uh, for these larger ones or Bluetooth for those small, uh, let's say, home use drones. Uh, there are two cameras actually in, in every drone. Uh, well, not every, but yeah. Uh, first one is general purpose camera that uh, you will interface with and uh, see what's going on uh, from drone perspective. There are some really cool first person view uh, goggles that you can also uh, purchase. But there's also another camera down here that's uh, usually locked for developers, uh, which uh, uses um, image processing to be able to uh, stabilize its position in uh, closed space, because outside it's easy to use GPS and everything else. Uh, drones in general suck inside, uh, especially when the floor is just nice black and shiny. Uh, they have absolutely no way to recognize if they're actually gliding back and forth with, uh, uh, maybe I can even show you that not, not even this drone is that smart. Uh, take off. Uh, so it's trying to stabilize itself. You can see that it moves, but it still glides back and forth a little. This is actually better than yesterday when I was trying it. So land, please. Uh, yeah, back to presentation, sorry. And of course, everything is battery powered, so, which is also another limitation uh, for drones. They, they can usually fly up to half an hour with recording and everything else around that. Uh, so how does a drone actually fly? Uh, there are a couple of terms that when you start working and programming drones, uh, we'll need to learn. Another one, uh, first one is this gas. Uh, it's practically uh, the uplift generated by uh, synchronous rotation of uh, all blades, uh, of all four blades on the drone. And of course, the faster they all uh, spin, they're gonna create, generate more, more lift and go higher. Uh, if you want to move your drone, next term you, you, you need to learn is pitch. It's actually tilting drone back and forth by speeding up uh, back two blades and lowering the speed of front blades. So it kind of, uh, which you probably noticed, does something like this and starts flying forward. Uh, that's why cameras usually have uh, some kind of st stabilization that can uh, have a nice picture. Uh, if th so, this is this is let's say positive pitch when you're going forward, or uh, you do the similar thing. Of course, if you want to go back, you'll speed up the front pro propellers and uh, lower the speed of the back one, so it's going to pitch uh, back. Of course, same principle used for uh, moving left and right. The, the, uh, this thing is called roll. So just like like uh, uh, the ship gets to a wave and it rolls back uh, left and right. Speeding up now the same side propellers and, and lowering the speeds enables drones to move left and right. There is another combination that I haven't mentioned here on, on slides is uh, combining diagonal uh, blades, uh, which gives you the in-place rotation uh, simply by using the physics of uh, inertia. Uh, this is a development conference. so. I'm going to focus only on small part of software for a uh, remote controller. If you are interested in building your own drone and uh, building even a software for it, these are practically the two locations that you have to be aware of. Drone Code is a global community where companies that uh, manufacture drones come together with developers, actually. So this is one of the unique places where you have industry and the uh, 
uh, let's say, enthusiasts come in uh, and uh, contribute. Uh, Parrot is uh, a member of Drone Code. That's why most of their software is open source. Uh, DYI Drones is an amazing community of enthusiasts uh, and few companies that can give you, well, th you can find any type of resource for uh, building, programming, creating drone, helicopter, airplane, whatever type of unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV you want to build, you can probably find everything you need there, including places where to buy hardware. Well, hardware components, anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I'll use the uh, uh, purpose now is to show you a few demos, actually. Uh, reason why I chose JavaScript is, uh, I guess most of you are familiar with it, and uh, even though uh, Parrot SDK is open source for um, Android and iOS, it's much simpler actually to take a laptop and play with JavaScript around it. So uh, disclaimer first, I mentioned uh, drones really aren't smart enough when flying indoors, but uh, I'm gonna try, actually uh, for the first demo, we, we maybe don't even have to uh, flight. So, first demo is video streaming. So, uh, this drone and most of uh, others use, use a standard RTSP over UDP to uh, uh, send video stream, which you can actually play in VLC or any other uh, stream enabled player to see it on your screen. So, I'm going to try now to do just that. All I need to do is, instead of flying it, say start video. Uh, all the code will be on my GitHub later, uh, today probably or tomorrow when I, when I uh, push it out, so uh, you can find all of this. So I've now sent a command to start the video and to play it. I'm just gonna use standard, uh, well, FF play. And let's see how it all goes. The camera stabilization isn't really good because it's not flying, but you can see most of it. Uh, okay, we'll play around a little bit more. So, next thing you can do with uh, similar thing. Uh, not sure if you're uh, familiar with uh, FFmpeg, but uh, Instead of just playing video stream, you can run it through FFmpeg, which is open source uh, as well, uh, tool for decoding video, and uh, 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 you can create one, one image and overwrite, one, uh, overwrite it all the time, or uh, you can create a series of images, transcode it to different formats, uh, whatever uh, needs to be done. So uh, the next thing I just need to do is say save video, and see, uh, terminal will, will just show that I started FFmpeg, and if everything went well, I should have, yeah, there's an out image here that should be constantly updating. Yeah. Uh, FFmpeg is configured to uh, take uh, uh, a snapshot of uh, of the camera five times every second, then save it to this uh, image here. Okay, so this is nice without even flying. Uh, now for flying, there is a little bit more, more theory that uh, you need to do, so that, that you need to know. Uh, first is that uh, drones are in constant ping with uh, remote controller. So uh, there are, of course, uh, stabilization mechanisms that will uh, adjust everything, but in general, uh, there is a different frequency for different models, but this combination of pitch, roll, gas, and yaw uh, is sent 40 times a second from controller to uh, drone, uh, which is then processed to enable drone to move, fly, uh, 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 and everything else. So, uh, to, to fly it, uh, you need to just make sure that uh, you're sending status of these flags, values of these flags, in this case, one to, uh, one to, uh, zero to 100, on a regular basis. So in Node.js, that's a simple set timeout, so it shouldn't be a problem for you, I guess. 
And let's give it a try. Oh, not, not that one. Here. So I'm going to tell it to dance. Mm -hmm. So this is just automated pilot practically to make it dance a little bit. Okay, it's not. Nice. Demos are working, yay. Yeah, th there is a general rule for those that haven't been on conferences before, never do a live demo. So that's why I have four. Okay, so, nice. Uh, we have a demo of a drone taking off, flying, taking pictures or whatever, so perfect time to make David uh, again, well, hate us. Uh, next demo is actually uh, about uh, making a selfie. What you can do now is combine these things, uh, send it to a takeoff command, let it hover a little bit, uh, start a video, uh, process that, generate an image for uh, a selfie, and uh, post it to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you like. Uh, unfortunately, my laptop is now connected to uh, the Wi-Fi of uh, the drone, so I can paste, uh, so I can post anything uh, back to the internet. But at least we can see the image. Hopefully, the image stabilization worked nicely. So let's give it a try. Selfie. Are you gonna work? Oh, we have a FF play is already taking things. Ah man. Okay, well, never mind. It continued to update update the out image. I have to say first, stop video. Just turn it a little bit back because, yeah, we have time for more demos. <laughs> and I'm going to switch to selfie picture here. Let's give it another try. Yeah. The lightning really is bad. Not sure if you can see me over there, but that's supposed to be the selfie of me and you behind. Um, I swear it's me. Uh, it actually does have an HD camera, but it's really dark out there. I mean, I can hardly see you, so I can't. Sorry? Yeah, it is me. See. Okay, nice. So uh, that's, that's the easy part. Uh, another thing, uh, there are a few challenges in uh, drone technology that still haven't been resolved properly. Uh, first one is uh, distance of your uh, remote control and range. Uh, currently, uh, even the best uh, Wi-Fi based drones have up to a couple of kilometers range with some strong antennas and so on. But actually, uh, where's my Raspberry? Ah, it's somewhere over there. Yeah. Never mind. You can take a small device called Raspberry Pi. You probably heard of it. It's a, a great computer that runs Linux and can actually run Node with few tweaks. Uh, what you can do is create a proxy from the code that I just shared here and strap it to your drone because this drone can take up to five kilos of weight anyway, uh, with the battery and uh, over 3G actually, you control your drone, uh, uh, well, anywhere in the world. Uh, there will be some delays uh, in, in image processing, streaming and everything, but it actually works, trust me. I mean, I can't show you that right now, so a bit difficult. Another thing that's not really uh, that well uh, solved is, well, not just visual perception, 
but in general, uh, self-awareness of drones. They have just one useful camera, and that means that the uh, drone has absolutely no way of recognizing distance from objects or anything like that. What you can do is actually, uh, also as an experiment, uh, stream your data, just like we did with the selfie and uh, uh, video streaming. You can process it. You can create uh, your own open CV uh, code that will recognize shapes, colors, or whatever. So w w when he's there and you kind of uh, put something red in front of it, it can take off and do something that uh, you want. Or uh, you can use uh, Google Vision or uh, MS Azure services for image processing, which are amazing. Uh, uh, and very fast, actually. Uh, uh, you, can, you can set the quality of image on the drone and say that uh, it should be, let's say, lower quality if you're outside. So, But it can recognize your face. It can uh, find people. And it, it can do everything in, well, let's say under a second. So it gives you a way to create things like Follow Me, which actually paired uh, Bebop 2 with latest version has. Uh, it's combining GPS from uh, your smartphone. That's con actually, uh, yeah, controller for, uh, standard controller for uh, Bebop is Android or iOS application that you download for free from App Store. So uh, there is an upgrade that's called Follow Me, and it's using visual, vi visual processing of, uh, of an image to uh, identify your position, and then combining that with GPS from, from the phone and GPS from, uh, from the device, and I've tried it, actually, I've skied, and it, it was flying behind me. Of course, uh, as a friend of mine said, uh, uh, might be difficult if all of us are skiing with drones around, but when it comes to that, we'll solve it. Uh, so there still are things that you can do, but uh, these, let's say, cheap civilian drones don't have all those sensors, cannot recognize space, color, uh, uh, or anything like that. But uh, it's a nice experiment for whoever of you becomes enthusiastic about uh, playing with drones. So, uh, yeah, I'm almost done. Um, I'm uh, head of uh, open source and technical uh, uh, editor at uh, TopTal. I mentioned that. So one of the things that we have for uh, contributors to our technical content are annual plural site subscriptions. Uh, from what I understand, most of you here uh, are students or should be or learning, whatever, but plural site is useful to anyone. So I have a friend somewhere up there that has two paper drones with my name on them. So. Uh, Whoever catches them, please find me or drop me an email or whatever, and I'll set you up with a plural site subscription. Yeah, there's one. Looks like the other one ended up in the lounge. Congratulations.